All right. Before uh, uh, studying the mechanism of nucleophilic substitution reactions, we'll have to just take a look at two more uh, possible substitution reactions. And I think uh, we left at number four last time. We'll be doing number five. Another substitution that is possible is substitution of X by amino group. It is one of the very important reactions shown by haloalkanes. So you can substitute it by amino group and this reaction leads to the class of compounds which are called as amines. Formation of amines takes place here, right? Why is it important that the reaction does not stop after the formation of one product? It goes on. Let's see what the steps are. What we do here, we take, I'll, I'll not take a general reaction, I'll take a specific uh, haloalkane, for example, CH3 CH2Br, right? Bromoethane. And if we react with, with a molecule of ammonia, ammonia is NH3 and I have written it like this, HNH2. The conditions to be needed are alcoholic again, alcoholic medium me kiya jata and we heat it. What happens here is that this leaves as a byproduct. We have HBr here as a byproduct. What are we left with? CH3, CH2, NH2. So in the first step, Br, the weaker nucleophile is replaced, is substituted by a stronger nucleophile, NH2. The name is ethanamine. Ethanamine and it is a one degree amine. This amine is a one degree amine. That is what happens here. The ethyl amine is the IUPAC name. The reaction does not stop here. Because we have added ammonia, it does not stop here. In the next step, what happens is this CH3, CH2, NH2, the primary amine formed in the first step, it reacts with more of Br, CH2, CH3, R, alkyl, halide, right? So we will separate this NH2 as NHH. So that it will be easier for us to show the byproducts and the products, right? Again, the conditions are the same. HBr leaves as the byproduct. When HBr leaves as the byproduct, what are we left with? We are left with CH3, CH2, CH3, CH2, NH, and then another CH2, CH3. Or we can simply write it down as CH3, CH2, whole 2, NH, diethyl amine. There is no space to write down the name or I might just write it here. The compound formed in the second step is diethyl amine and this is a 2 degree amine, right? Again, the reaction does not stop here. I can't show you the whole thing at one single time. I'm really sorry for that. You'll just have to keep copying uh, the previous steps because the board is very small. It does not stop here. Our CH3, CH2, hold twice. NH, I'm writing it as this, NH. It reacts with another molecule of the alkyl halide and our alkyl halide here is bromoethane. Again, these two leave as byproduct HBr. Now what are we left with? We are left with three alkyl, three ethyl groups. So it is CH3, CH2, whole 3, N. Right? It is simply triethyl amine. Right? Now this time this is a 3 degree tertiary amine. It does not stop here. We have the last and the fourth step, which is that this tertiary amine, CH3, CH2, whole 3 N, it finally reacts with another molecule of bromoethane. And the conditions are the same in the presence of C2H5OH and heat. What is the last product we get? We get CH3, CH2, whole 4. Now these were the 3 alkyl groups, this becomes the 4th. And we have N there, which is now there as N positive, and we have Br negative also. Now this is a salt. Which salt is it? It is a cottonary salt. Right? So the first thing you remember about this whole reaction is that X is a weaker substitute than amino group. Amino group can substitute X 
and it can lead to the formation of amines. However, it leads to the formation of all the amines, 1 degree, 2 degree, 3 degree and the quaternary salt right this is a very important reaction and this reaction is known by a specific name it is called as hoffman ammonolysis preparation of amine salts hoffman ammonolysis of alkyl halides by which we can prepare all the three primary secondary tertiary amines along with the quaternary ammonium salt right four degree is not a proper representation actually it's a quaternary ammonium salt right now the last one the last very important one is that which substitutions before we uh, talk about the mechanism uh, I don't know. I, we are probably on the sixth one. We can substitute substitution of X by hydrogen. Right? How did we get this Rx? We got it from a parent hydrocarbon in which hydrogen was replaced, X was introduced. We can reverse this whole thing. We can substitute this X by a hydride ion, by a nucleophile, by a negatively charged hydrogen atom and get back our parent alkene. Like if we have this Rx as our uh, halo alkene, we'll, ha we'll need a nucleophile which is H negative. H negative is called as the hydride ion and this hydride ion is uh, der der this hydride ion is uh, the source of the hydride ion is lithium ammonium hydride right i'm really sorry for this little background noise the source is lithium ammonium hydride wahan se hame hydride ion mil jata hai and what we get is rh the alkene right we can get back the parent alkene and x leaves along with the pair of electrons which is called as the leaving group however you have to remember one thing here that this halo alkane it can be one degree it can be two degree it can be three degree you have already studied that at the beginning that if x is linked to the primary uh, carbon it's a one degree halo alkane if x is linked to the two degree it's a secondary two degree uh, halo alkane if x is linked to the three degree a carbon atom it's a tertiary alkane as far as this reaction is concerned these two one degree and two degree will undergo hydrogenation and give you alkane in this reaction they undergo uh, hydrogenation hi kahenge isko, addition of hydrogen and the resulting compound will, will be an alkane however as far as these are concerned the tertiary ones, tertiary halo alkanes, if we do this to them, if we introduce hydrogen atom to them, what happens is that they undergo dehydrohalogenation. They lose the halogen atom along with another hydrogen atom. They will lose, it is called as dehydrohalogenation, loss of X as well as loss of hydrogen, resulting in the formation of alkenes, right? The resulting class of compounds is alkene. So this is an important information to remember here that when you substitute X by hydrogen, if you are doing that reaction to 1 degree and 2 degree, the resulting class of compounds is alkenes. And if you are doing that reaction to the tertiary haloalkane, the resulting class of compounds is alkenes because that 3 degree compound will undergo both dehydrogenation as well as dehalogenation, dehydrohalogenation resulting in the formation of a double bond, resulting in the formation of alkenes, right?